Bonjour, je suis Agostino Bruzzone, I am Agostino Bruzzone from Genoa University. <coughs> Thank you very much for the organizer for giving me the opportunity to give, to deliver this speech. Je remercie beaucoup l'organisation de l'université et des institutions arabes qui vont faire cette cinquième édition de le, de le goal pour améliorer les logistiques, les opérations et le management de toutes ces activités. Je vais vous parler aujourd'hui d'intelligence artificielle et des gens intelligents. Je vais parler en anglais, je m'excuse, mais je pense que toute la conférence est en anglais, je voudrais seulement donner cette bienvenue en français. So I will go to deliver the speech, obviously, in English. That's much more easy for me. Uh, I'm from Italy. I thank you very much, all the organizers of the event that, in fact, are very efficient going with this fifth edition despite the current crisis. So we will talk about uh, intelligence uh, in terms of artificial intelligence, intelligent agents, simulation, modeling, data analytics to support strategic decision with special attention to operation and logistics. I will have to say that this is a very important topic and we will present several applications that are very crucial in order to improve and be competitive. Uh, so let me shift to my presentation. Uh, so if technology will support me. So I hope that you are seeing my screen. Currently, just a very nice uh, old paint of uh, Rabat all time, but uh, all the system evolve. And today we will talk about innovative technologies such as artificial intelligence, intelligence agent, modern simulation, data analytics. And this could really change the way we operate. And the logistics could have a big impact on this aspect. Let me say that um, these techniques uh, look very innovative. Uh, however, they date back uh, quite a while because if we talk about um, modern simulation, I had the honor and pleasure to be a friend of John McLeod, who was one of the founders of simulation, working mostly with NASA, Air Force, DOD, Navy in the early 50s when the computer was analog analog computers uh, for um, rocket science, aeronautics, etc., and uh, using modern simulation. So in 2003, we celebrate 50 years, so half a century of a major scientific event in modern simulation in San Diego, where the simulation Society for Computer Simulation was established. So it dates back uh, almost three quarter of, uh, of uh, one century. If I talk about artificial intelligence, a lot of people have seen the movie about uh, Turing, that is obviously one of the major fathers of modern artificial intelligence. They're demonstrating that despite the dra dramatization that the artificial intelligence was in use during Second World War efficiently in, um, in intelligence for uh, decryption of critical messages such as that one generated by Enigma machine. So we are talking again of something that, that date back uh, three quarters of a century. Uh, data analytics, I always make the example that we still use often moving average, weighted average that was in use by ancient Romans 2000 years ago to decide how much wine to import from Spain or from Greece. So how, how many ship, how many containers at that time, and there was obviously different kind of container than nowadays, but how many amphora of uh, wine you have to import in Rome or to move around. And so it's evident that these technologies are very consolidated, but today we do in different way. Why we do in different way? Because there's been an evolution in technology. Some of the gadget or the gizmo that we see over here, some autonomous systems, uh, some drones, the mobile capability allow us to access easily and distributely to a wide spectrum of information. And I don't think the, the future of logistics will be just based on robotics, but robotics will have a huge impact on that. 
And uh, there are many more opportunity management to optimize procedure and to you have not just what we call iron, but to have, let me say, soft power, soft company. So I introduced so, such concept of strategic engineering that deals with combining simulation data analytics, artificial intelligence, in order to support decision making. And we'll see some example. As I said, I am currently the president of the Strategos that I will mention you, it's an initiative in Genoa University to diffuse this new discipline that was arising 10 years ago in the, no, sorry, five years ago in MIT. <clears throat> and uh, we, I'm even serving in the spin-off of Genoa University using this technology for for supporting companies, then you can find easy information about me on the website of the simulation team, www.simulationteam.com or www.itim.unij.it slash strategos at Genoa University. By the way, just a mention about what is simulation team. Simulation team is a nonprofit scientific organization and that is involving entities all around the world and uh, including uh, Europe, US, uh, Africa and uh, Australia and so on. In Asia, we, have, we are active in Korea, we have uh, centers in university in Riga, Marseille, in Lim, in uh, Barcelona, in uh, Rio de Janeiro, in St. Petersburg, I believe, and in Genoa, where we have uh, currently, I'm serving as president of this organization. In fact, in Genoa, we have a very active group and um, simulation team over there works a lot in projects applied to industry and a lot about obviously logistics uh, because uh, Genoa is a major port, the major port currently existing in uh, in Italy and one of the major Mediterranean seas, very long tradition, Genoa was, even my university dates back to 1471, so it's uh, uh, around uh, 550 years uh, from its establishment. And um, we're very proud of that, but we are very proud to work on innovative technology to develop new solution. Nowadays, we have huge effort required by companies to support them with uh, remote uh, <clears throat> models, digital twin that could allow them to install, operate, provide service to, to systems, uh, to machine equipment, even uh, far away by local uh, support, uh, but supervised uh, remotely and to provide a training education to prepare these people uh, to, to face a currently challenge COVID, but a strategic advantage, whatever time it is. Let me spend just a few words about Strategos and strategic engineering. As I mentioned, new is a um, new discipline. The concept is using this new technology, not by themselves, but in closed loop in a way that could help the, the support decision and being closed loop with reality. What I mean, nowadays we can collect many information in this way. We can even check and feed the model tune the model and keep them going. Uh, in Genoa, we established Strategos, that is the first master of science in Italy and among first one around the world on this subject of strategic engineering, because there is a big need even to prepare uh, scientists, uh, young engineers to work, uh, not only in creating this tool, but even in supporting uh, users that are obviously companies, but even public authorities and institutions to well operate such system to, to promote the diffusion of this architecture and to give a strategic advantage to people that are leading by innovation the situation. Uh, a very important concept is the strategy is not a plan. I mean, many times we misunderstand what is meaning by strategy, no? In a lot of, we, if we look around nowadays in the world, uh, we will realize there is many people that talk about strategy and probably we realize just looking current crisis, but even previous crisis, there is a big lack of strategic capabilities. 
What is strategy? Uh, the, the best time probably was introduced by General Jomini, that was the theoretical expert, uh, was a general, but in fact was mostly a, an expert of strategy, one of the founder with Clausewitz, and was a, a Swiss general that uh, served the Napoleon. Um, so is the theoretical uh, genius behind uh, Napoleon uh, application. Napoleon was a genius, but even Jomini, they for just to mention, probably most of you know that the word logistics uh, in the modern meaning, that means uh, managing flows of goods and information all around, was introduced by General Jomini, considering it one of the five crucial aspects of the art of war. Et Jomini say, la stratégie, c'est l'art de bien diriger. Qu'est-ce que signifie? Uh, it means that strategy is not planning. Strategy includes planning, but strategy is an art. The art of well managing things to achieve the final goal that you fix it, okay, to succeed. And so there, there's a lot to do with management, and not to, just to plan once and then watch, no? And, uh, and in logistics, it's not the case that in the five uh, major part of the art of war, there was strategy and there was logistics, in addition to grand, empty, tactic, and, uh, and what they call uh, the engineer, that, that is the, the, the genie, the engineer, the genie for, uh, for the supporting operation in turn, constructing bridge, uh, arranging roads, uh, et cetera, all the support uh, engineering activity that are common in defense. That had not exactly the same meaning that we are used to say in engineering uh, in industry, but but logistics and strategy is very clear. Uh, um, strategos, as I said, we started. To give you an example, the concept is um, we take many more data nowadays that one we had in the past, and we put in a closed loop. What it means, a closed loop? Um, we get information, for instance, from operation. Nowadays, we get many more than 10 years ago, many more, more than 20 years ago, because companies are heavily digitalized. Uh, all the process was already digital, uh, let me say, end of the 90 for sure, in most of the terminal. But Nowadays, even more pervasive, more easy to access at this data. We can add easily sensors that before was requiring big effort to be integrated in the management information system. Nowadays, it's much more easy. All this data create big data. No? Big data, it's very good, but big data have an issue. Normally, a plenty of inconsistency. There is a mess there of in gaps, uh, lacks of, inf of data. Uh, read in time too much intensive information about some subject, uh, uh, contrast among the data and errors, etc. If you have big data, it's very hard to go through, but using data analytics, artificial intelligence, you can filter, you can process and elaborate, you can fuse data from different sources of different kind, and you can get a good picture of what is going, or even what is has happening, but even what is going. Uh, that's a good point, but obviously to know, to look at the past that don't allow you to predict the future. Because I feel a very good example is, uh, we have a port where we have all the information about the arrival of a ship, et cetera. We can see how it's going. But if tomorrow somebody call us and say in two weeks, we can send you a ship, do you have space to operate it? Uh, I know what was happening, but, uh, and maybe I can even understand if there is an open slot. But I don't know if I take this ship, what could be the impact on all the other operations? Because by itself, the shot, the spot could be there, but the arrival could create a saturation that create problems. So to see the impact of my action, I need models. These models can be fed by the information collected and, and generated, let me say, the information generated by collecting data from, by AI, uh, artificial intelligence, we can put inside simulation where intelligent agent can operate in order to get the right picture of what is go will happen in future based on alternative decision. And then I put in place, but it's not closed, closed because the loop is closed. I apologize for alliteration. What it means that um, when we put an action in place, we continue to measure what happened on the field 
by continuing collecting data and see if there is a consistency between reality and our model prediction. And if it's not, we put in place some intelligent uh, solution that do some kind of machine learning to fine tune the model in order to make it work so fine and keep it updated. Because we have to consider that many times when we have a discrepancy between reality and uh, uh, model prediction simulation result of data analytics, uh, um, it could be for errors, obviously, that's most probable. Sometimes it's due to the fact we collect the wrong data or we get the uh, data that are not reliable. But most of the time, the boundary condition change. It, it could be the market, it could be a regulation and authority, but let's consider that often change because there are even other party that are sometimes our competitor, sometimes are even our partner, that in any case make a decision that change the boundary conditions, okay? And this will require to adapt our strategy and our management. And we require even maybe to readapt goals, et cetera. We already mentioned the, the point of strategy from Jomini, but there is a much older and maybe more, even, even more wise indication provided by Socrates 2,400 years ago at least by the words written down by Plato. And in the Lacus, he defined what is a strategos. Now, I don't know if you are aware, but the strategos was a general or an admiral in the state city of the ancient Greece. And um, Socrates from Athens was used to say that the strategos is somebody that have an art, an art to better understand what happened and what is ongoing, as well as to predict what will happen. Now. This is exactly the kind of tools that we like to develop by using strategic engineering. And if more than a tool is an architecture, and obviously our strategos don't prepare strategos in terms of general admiral or I manager of company, maybe in future they will become, but they prepare engineers and scientists that work to develop such solutions, such architecture, such algorithms, such tool and work in being side by side with decision maker to understand their need to create a proper model because many times we fail because we develop a good model but not the right one for the user and to help them in getting confident in using this tool that is very important because if, if you have to take big decisions if you have to to develop strategies that deal with million dollars or human life, or even your career, I believe it will take just if you trust such system. Another quote, uh, the going with the quote uh, that I would like to mention, it came from uh, came from uh, Christopher Columbus. That is, uh, I'm proud to say, at least in Italy, we are we feel, and in Genoa for sure, we are sure that Christopher Columbus is from Genoa, even if many other town around the planet claim that was burned there. It seems there are objective demonstration in, in act that was from Genoa, but I don't care really about that. But Christopher Columbus was obviously genius and uh, strategos in, in his own way. And um, in one of his memoria, memories, he was saying that um, strategos need to look uh, to the objectives, to the goals, as something that can be handled, managed, readapted, based on the change of necessity. And you need to be able to change your priorities. You can add new one and you can dismiss the sum out. That's very important because one of the key aspects in strategy is even to be able to define your own goals and don't be too much, let me say, fixed on them without getting the whole picture. And probably you will realize that in most of the cases in the company, in government, in the institution, many failure in perceiving a right strategy is just to the fact that you, or maybe that decision makers don't have the capacity to properly identify the goal and to properly readapt this one. No? We can see priority to things that are, let me say, almost gone and missing the key point in new one. A very important aspect is uh, 
to involve decision makers. So the new technology have a huge potential. Here you can see an example of something we developed. This is very compact uh, cube, two meter by two meter by two meter and a half, where you can enter three, four people, get immersed in a virtual world, mixing virtual and real information, making um, model running interoperable, means that you can connect the different model together. So one of economics, one of operation, one of um, boundary conditions, a general market, etc. You can touch and move the object virtually, interactively. So what I mean, obviously, is some kind of luxury. Probably you can do the same just sitting and looking through tables. No, but in this way, it's much more intuitive. It's much more quick to get immersed in the world, and then obviously these are. In coupled with all such kind of details, but allow you to understand if there is consistency in the operation, because when you watch a port operating in a virtual environment, you can identify if it's work correctly, if there are inconsistencies in the logic, in the procedure that was set up. If you take a look on, the, on dynamically to the dy evolution of variables, and eventually you can interact uh, touching and changing the parameter, you can understand better how it works, if it's correct, but even get a better understanding of things. And doubly, decision makers need to have a very easy and direct way to access. They cannot find in technology a barrier. They cannot have always an analyst that uh, is in between them and the decision tool, because otherwise there is a big risk they will not use. Um, Strategos, as I mentioned, is this new degree. We have a very good partnership with many institutions all around. The world, uh, we have uh, historical partners such as uh, Sovereign Order of Malta that is dealing with the humanitarian operations and giving support all around the world without uh, consideration about difference of religion, ethics, etc. since over 1,000 years. We have uh, the NATO Center of Excellence, so the alliance uh, that uh, even Morocco, you know, is partner uh, Mediterranean cooperation with NATO. We have major companies such as Leonardo, Thales, NVIDIA, Itachi, Accenture, not just big industry, but even consultancy company and even small, medium-sized enterprise. We cooperate with uh, entities strongly related with United Nations on water uh, uh, needs and crises. So we have big partnership. We have a, even several universities that maybe uh, are not point out, but uh, just in Singapore, in Europe, all around Europe. Uh, and we will be very glad to have a partnership with anybody of you that is interested in this subject because we feel it's very important. We would like that our kids, uh, our young engineers, could have opportunity to work, uh, make getting their hands dirty uh, on short stage where they could uh, get the fla fragrance of working on real problem. And then they spend the last semester, last six months in an industry. I say industry, but could be a consulting firm, could be a small, medium size, high tech company, could be an international labs and so on, working on project based on applying strategic engineering on the field. Let me talk a little bit about marine environment. Uh, along the time, the challenge, has been quite changed, you know. Um, yeah, we have some pictures that deal with the thread, not too much at port, but at the sea. Uh, let me say at the naval operations, in mostly dealing with the defense of land security. Um, in the past, we had the experience of uh, risk that could came from an opponent navy, but nowadays a major risk came from, let me say, asymmetric threat, as we was used to say even 20 years ago. Um, if we think at the horizon crisis is a classical example where we had everything, but we never try to address the such crisis, you know, the, 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 the explosions on the rig, that exploration rig that was in the Mexican Gulf. And we don't have never trained and evaluate a global mega ecological disasters such as that. That was costing billions and billions and billions of US dollar, have huge impact of an environment, have a disruptive impact on, uh, on term of economics uh, for people, 
not because um, environment is fundamental to li live, but uh, if you destroy fisherman industry, you will put a thousand, thousand people on the street uh, and all the connected activities, uh, uh, reparation, naval, et cetera. And this could be a huge problem, and this is just an example. And the dealing with evolution of the scenario, obviously we have to face that. We need the capacity to identify this problem because this problem has a dimension. And sometimes a time horizon, for instance, in this case, the probability of accident can move it as a remote event, but remote event happen each year, as unfortunately we had seen this year around the world from COVID, from uh, uh, problems of um, invasion of insect in Africa, we had the problem of crisis, uh, geopolitical crisis. We have a big uh, plane accident. These are events that are very uncommon because each day there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of uh, planes flying, ships sailing around the world. But the accident, unfortunately, due to this reason, the probability of an accident that is mostly negligible by single uh, element combined, all these combinations could happen could have a disruptive impact. We need models, we need the capability to collect and predict, and uh, predict maybe not the event, but predict there is a thread, identify it, evaluate the risk value, and properly address how to manage in order to prevent, and then in case to mitigate. Logistics obviously is a very good example because it is a complex uh, system intended as a characterized by, let me say, um, the classical VUCA factors, uh, the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. And uh, we, in logistics, we deal with external systems. So if we talk uh, about uh, container um, logistics, uh, you have issue about uh, the operation in the node, about the transportation, the environmental condition could affect the node, could affect the vector, the transport. You have to coordinate multiple operators that could have their own problem. You have a huge flow of information back and forward. You have the need and the demand of final, uh, let me say, customer users. You have the general market evolution. You have new technology that could help you in tracing, controlling, remotely operating, uh, it's a huge possibility. Over here, you see some example things we do to train, uh, for instance, operator of um, sea gantry crane in big port to, to define uh, operation and procedures uh, inside uh, port terminals, uh, to identify multimodal logistics, combine air, ground, and uh, sea transportation, to use innovative technology to prepare new generation to analyze this system. And so I feel it's a very good point for strategic engineering. We have even new component, a new opportunity. Here we have some example from drone to deliver goods all around the world. That obviously is, let me say a little bit um, age. What I mean, uh, it could seem science fiction, but uh, I can mention you that before COVID crisis, we was addressed for an international competition by, um, a top uh, level company in aeronautics to develop a drone able to deliver at 150 kilometers of distance, package up to 500 kilos with just electric, uh, let me say, with very low uh, pollution emission that was based on the idea to use just electric propulsion. Uh, that could be very challenging. And this was devoted to serve connection airport to airport and uh, node to, let me say, logistics node to point of sales uh, in terms of large retailers. And this was a project in China. Uh, so th that was last year. And uh, technology is not yet ready, maybe, but we are very near. Uh, it's a challenge, not only for technology, for battery, autonomy, etc. That's a challenge, obviously. But it's a challenge for management. Can you imagine when you will have this good, this device? Can you imagine how much time you can save by moving this package from one place to the other one straight, uh, reducing, let me say, interconnection, etc. 
but you can imagine even the risk. You can imagine the complexity of managing GNT space. There is Caesar project in Europe, uh, and is a similar in the United States since, uh, let me say, decade, that is dealing with the idea to remove <coughs> their corridor, to simplify, remove the air corridor for planes, make plane completely not fly by artificial intelligence, that currently planes are already remotely operated. You know that pilot and the crew on the plane just take care of some specific part just for, for extra security reason, but in reality, all the flight is controlled by direction received by the ground. And theoretically, it's possible since 30 years, at least for sure, even reliable extensively, 20 years to land and uh, take off uh, automatically. No? Um, but uh, the problem is to supervise because currently air traffic control is made by humans and air traffic control is oversaturated because there are too many planes. And so there is no way to increase the fort and at least in area like US and Europe, maybe in other places that have low density of flight is, is possible. In fact, it's not so easy the air traffic control in several continents, but in Europe it's not possible to go forward because their corridors are full. And unfortunately, humans cannot have a full view of a complex three-dimensional environment that is dynamic, like that one of the flights. So the idea is to pass it to some kind of intelligence system that manage this one, where humans supervise. But the problem is that the human, in case of collapse or failure of the system, the humans cannot have the capability to take it back because the complexity is too big. Obviously, if you cancel the air corridor, you can fly freely in a three-dimensional environment. You have much more space to fly your commercial planes with passenger goods. But obviously, it's much more complicated. There are step-by-step -step advances in that. Obviously, it, is, it will be even much evil impacted if we have drones uh, in a manned aerial vehicle that move. We have such small UGV that you see on the bottom left that allow to manage warehouse and dispatch good in parcel company and to move entire shelf <coughs> all around in big warehouse in a way that was not possible to think about up to 10 years ago. We can use it for uh, in marine environment for surveillance, for carrying down the inspection, to operate on rig, for safety and security, many applications. Web services are enabled. We was up to a few years ago down into industry 4.0, 4.0, that is strongly based on the idea to couple each system with some kind of uh, not by itself, but with the web, and so to say that we have cyber physical system. Um, COVID uh, was overstressing this concept, moving, let me say, probably from industry for the zero to the fifth revolution in industrial uh, in industrial um, activities. Because what happened? is that um, we have the capability to integrate many systems, but the problem now is to operate remotely, to operate safely, to be able in some way to supervise and to take care of all these aspects, uh, uh, providing even new service very intensively. No, I, I, we was thinking about to connect the data of a machine on a production line. But nowadays we like to have a wall line that operate with few people on site, with remote maintenance, with remote eventual support for installation of new component, etc. They don't deal too much with anthropomorphic robotics, but deal a lot with uh, getting a, a real virtual environment that is a digital twin of what we have now. Transportation is a wonderful example to make the system interconnected in a way that is intuitive, immediate, interoperable. We had an uh, intelligent transportation system existing since uh, probably the 80s or at least 90 extensively, but we don't see such big revolution. Nowadays, some app that we have on the mobile are really rev revolutionary for how we drive around, 
how the, the company manage a resource and we can do even more and space and cyber are two major environments. There are major environment, but they create even vulnerability, I would like to say, because obviously they expose our assets, our goods, our value to the possibility to be dependent on this resource and this resource could be even compromised. So we have to pay great attention to avoid such kind of problems. Another major aspect, let me say, is about infrastructure. We have seen recently problem in infrastructure. Genoa was very, very heavily impacted my town by the collapse of our bridge uh, just two years ago, two year in, in August 2018. And there was a, a strong connection with the port, so strongly affected human mobility, so the town strongly affect logistics but what happened it was possible in some way to redirect the flows to to reduce the damage that could be disruptive could be shut down all the activities and part of genoa is the, the life of genoa town and this is the major part in italy so support the milan area so all north italy strongly rely even in this capability it's possible in some way to compensate and we complete the bridge this year and it's operational since uh, July, and uh, it's uh, so the problem is solved, but just partially because the collapse put in evidence the fragility of the infrastructure. So we need the artificial intelligence, we need the new sensor, we need new system in order to control the critical infrastructure, to prevent accident, to identify problem in related to maintenance. No. Uh, currently, by a drone, probably you can develop new solution to make inspection in bridge in area that was not easily accessible, mostly not accessible, because if you can access just once each uh, several year, maybe you never access because it's expensive. You do two, three times, and then you forget about it. And then another one is you have a thousand or new kind of sensor that could allow you to get a better control. This kind of accident are common. You, I told you about a bridge collapse but it could be an explosion in the port. And for recently, we have such terrible event in Beirut that is just following by five years, the terrible event in Tianjin that are both related to the same things that was happening uh, 100 years ago in uh, Texas City in the United States about uh, nitrogen of ammonia that is really not so dangerous by itself. And the initial cause, the explosion cause in this case, were generated by different factor, but it's evident that uh, when you create a complex system, if you don't pay attention to this aspect, this is very dangerous. Obviously, another crucial aspect is urban logistics transportation. It was three years ago, in uh, two sorry two years ago in uh, Kwanzu, that is the headquarter of Alibaba. Alibaba is like is the major uh, Chinese. Uh, retailer that's operating in a very similar way to Amazon with some different strategy. It's, uh, it's what they call a unicorn, so it's far faster and evolving, even more faster than the Amazon that is huge. And uh, it was um, with Amazon among the first one to use a, a managed vehicle to deliver goods, but this is not the, this is not the revolution. The revolution is that they have a huge cloud computing capability. They provide cloud service all around, it probably is turning to be their biggest revenue source. But they was a very good idea two years ago. They say, why we don't use our capability to manage the traffic? Guangzhou is a town with quite a significant amount of people, completely controlled with the camera at each single intersection, tracking each single car. Uh, camera pretty old, let me say. They have to shut uh, the flash in order to get the ID plate, ID number of each car. So when you drive in the night, you say it's all these flashes. But uh, obviously, such data that now are there for several reasons, if processed by some modern system, not some old traffic supervision, they could allow to improve a lot. And not only to improve in Guangzhou or in Shanghai or in New York City or in Rabat, but even in medium town of 100,000 inhabitants where you can reduce cost of urban mobility. If you reduce cost of urban mobility, just 10%, you can save millions of dollars in or of euro on each of these towns. 
and this has to be multiplied by thousands. That could be even much bigger profit than what you can get from New York City once. And uh, be, why I mentioned that? Because just re- improving the efficiency of mass transportation companies, so the public transportation, of a 10%. I have example of town with 100,000 inhabitants that have a very crazy management. This is due to politics, is due to many aspects, but it's due mostly because there is no capability to handle this system, to keep updated. They do a research, they do a study, they forget it, they don't are able to implement. If they implement, they lose control of the implementation soon, etc. There are huge possibilities. Even a company that manage mass transportation in an area of 200,000 inhabitants over a town of 100,000 inhabitants, it could have costed that go up to 10 dozen of a million of euro, and revenues could be let me say drastically inferior. So if you can reduce extra costs, providing a better service, you can pay very good money for such service that in this case will be just a computing solution, integrating sensor that you have already, integrating data source that you can easily access at a reasonable price. So it's a multiplying factor, very clear. Let me mention even COVID. We are in COVID-19 age. A lot of people talk about emergency. Unfortunately, I feel there is no any emergency. This is a crisis. It's there. We hope that we'll finish soon, but there is no reason currently to think that we'll end so quickly. Okay. So what we have to do? In Italy, there are a lot of discussion about to close, open, lockdown, etc. Lockdown, that is obviously not a real lockdown. My feeling is there is no choice to be taken because uh, you don't have too many alternatives. Lock, real lockdown that could be effective is not sustainable. Uh, lockdown or a reduction in, uh, in the mobility, in uh, constraint to population that are too low cannot uh, slow down and no good the, the contagious. This we call pandemics is a real pestilence. Luckily, the lethality is not so terrible, but it's a real tragedy. And there are a lot of people that are suffering for many reasons, for, for the tragedy of the sickness and for the impact of economics. Uh, but the solution is to keep open. I mean, it's not just this one. The solution is to develop a capability to operate in this environment, a capability that could be useful. I mean, um, if I develop, like to make an example, uh, an augmented virtual reality system combined with your mobile that allow you to supervise and to give precise direction to some person that is not so skilled from Italy to Jakarta to mount a component of an industrial plant. So you can install this plant even if you don't have uh, the possibility to travel to Jakarta, but just to ship good, and you have some local operator that you can even train in some way, improve his own skill by this tool, but you can directly supervise, show him uh, if he's in the right place in the plant, if the system is properly oriented, in giving direction where to go, showing him uh, what is the sequence, the operation to be done, helping him in troubleshooting and commissioning the system. So with automation, et cetera. So it's not just a static system, but it's include the geometrical model, functional model, simulators, digital twin, and so on. Uh, that's uh, something that we use now because we cannot travel to Indonesia. But tomorrow we will use because we'll do much better. Even a very good experted person we like to have such app on his smartphone when he's doing installation someplace. Maybe not in Jakarta, but just in Genoa, because we'll be a very powerful uh, support system. So we can imagine what we develop now have a huge potential. And this deal with technology, that deal with chemical aspect, that deal with uh, informatics, uh, etc. We can do much better to make operation more safe. They cannot be completely safe, but uh, we can improve a lot. I always mention that actual casualty in Italy, along the last months, we passed from twice to around um, 50 times more lethal than car accident, okay? Car and truck accident. When we take a car, we are not scared. 
when we take a car that is raining and we have you no know, maybe the latest version of the most safe car, we are not scared usually. But when we take a car, we pay attention. What we pretend? We pretend the, the, the tire are good, the, we pretend the brakes are good, we pretend that uh, there is a good signal, good sign all around about uh, the road. We like to have a, a, a line on the ground, we like to have direction, we like that there are control to avoid the crazy people to drive around. If I go on the car with some other person, I will be glad if he's a good driver or at least a reasonable driver. Even if he's reasonable, he's not a pilot, I will feel safe. We will use, uh, we would like that our car could improve in terms of safety uh, equipment uh, from safety belt, airbag, uh, better structure, and so on. So COVID is just the same. COVID-19 is exactly the same. We should uh, pay same attention or at least 50 times more attention considering that is 50 times more dangerous. Okay, obviously number now with COVID are very uncertain, all these data are, but we don't have to look to the past just to make statistical analysis. We have to look to the future to understand how to improve and engineers and scientists especially in logistic operation, that is one of the most critical layer nowadays because it's that one that supports everything else. Logistics is necessary to distribute food, to distribute healthcare support, to distribute uh, people and resources to maintain operational, the critical layer such as power, such as um, water, such as gas, et cetera, and obviously healthcare. First of all, as I mentioned, we have to improve. We can do many things. We can make a possibility to uh, decontaminate area with a solution like UVC. We were studying, we was evaluating with packaging companies such Tetra Pak solution to make, uh, to use something that is available in a way to guarantee a better cleaning of um, goods, et cetera. But it's not so easy, you know, because if I apply UVC, Sometimes even through a package, it could have some kind of effect if there is inside some component. So we have to pay attention to make it working. At the same time, if I have a truck driver, I cannot expect that apply a protocol of safety. If he's in truck, we put EVC LED or we put some kind of ionization system to clean up the, the goods inside of the lorry. We cannot expect a truck driver that drive nine hours and in the middle of the night is arriving in a place and make the proper procedure, always and the percent safe. And so there is a risk that he gets some more toxic exposure to ozone or to EVC than he get from COVID-19 potential presence. So we need to develop right, not just a device, a but a wide solution. And obviously a lot deal with information, coupling information, make it more, available, uh, more effective in extracting from data such information. Here you have an example on the bottom left where we was doing something similar about uh, the collection of people from plants with contamination by autonomous system. But I say it is not autonomous system, it's everything. Obviously strategic uh, assets all around like uh, off-rig that we can develop solution to better develop, operate such kind of system and I believe in defense is a major aspect, but it's not just defense. It could be even just protecting our commercial goods. Here you have an example of uh, one project we was doing with a SWAT that uh, SWAT that is uh, some kind of special kind of vessel. In this case, is autonomous vessel. It can collect and deliver underwater system. We can have a flying system, but it's not just uh, let me say. Iron is not just robots. We can have currently threats, as in this case on the right, where you can spoof the GPS and change the course of a ship. There was a very interesting experiment from University of Texas carried out in a yacht on the Italian coast that make it um, possible to confuse the GPS uh, in a quite uh, effective way. You, know, you can imagine if a merchant ship is deviated, it's becoming like a bomb and we can do in many other environments. So we have to develop capability to understand this threat, to prevent them, to reduce vulnerabilities. Um, this deal with the creation of digital twins, 
So like in this case where we was doing models from a ship, from a rig, for a food and beverage machine, and creating this duplicate could be reused for many purposes because uh, we can use extended reality to help people in driving them, in using the system. So somebody that is an expert can go through a rack, plenty of uh, uh, network connection or with um, power driver and operate. We can put the, together people, train them. We can provide information real time and forecast on, mo on mobiles. So we can create environment for decision makers. So there is a huge potential of this solution for cooperative work. Setar, you have example of troubleshooting, training, giving augmented reality aid to operate uh, with the real system, guided uh, or supervised remotely. It's not just uh, science fiction, uh, good HoloLens like you can see here on the top left. That is not science fiction because they exist since not 10 years and more but uh, is even very easy as a tablet uh, you have example of that so i feel there is a huge potential for that we have even to face a big challenge nowadays and uh, this technology can help us to do things that up to few time ago was not very clear we have to pass from research in lab to make it available and change it drastically here are examples that are already on and the basic concept that is behind is to create such kind of strategic engineering uh, loop where you have models, you have uh, intelligence, you have data analytics, you collect information from the field, you process this information. And this is already a good, very usable result for users that need the, an easy way to access to decision makers. But then you can even provide an input to smart planner, artificial intelligence to provide support in decision that is not to decide, but to provide decision maker with this capability and that they can use uh, then uh, tool to refine the planning, to refine the management of the operations. At the same time, you have uh, the simulation, simulation that uh, can predict the impact of decisions suggested by the smart planners, suggested by decision maker, and is directly connected with the field of data analytics to have up-to-date data about the current situation, <coughs> the change in the connection among the different parameters, etc. Obviously, it is close the loop because then we implement the decision, we check if the results are what expected, and we continue in this way. There are very good examples. I feel I'm running out of time. I just give you such mention of this aspect, the critical. This is the list of the 10 biggest port evolution among up to 2018. As you can see, classically, China is one of the leading world countries. And we have many new things around, by the way. You know, we have um, the polar route that is uh, going to be expectable available soon. We have addictive manufacturing that will change what we ship because maybe we'll produce by workshop, by power, metal power, or, or other kind of material. The, the, the printing maybe in future, we have new systems from ship without crew, from very tiny vest uh, device that we can use to inspect the dangerous part inside the tank, inside the plant, inside the ship. Um, you know, I don't think that robotics will be disruptive by itself, but as a part of the whole answer. I mean, today the cost of the crew of the ship is not so crucial, for at least when we talk about a, a cargo ship. But obviously, it introduces a lot of challenge. It could be interesting um, because maybe you want to keep uh, less people more qualified on board and more system that could self-help themselves. Uh, you don't want to send people inside a, a confined space that is very dangerous for explosion, for toxic, etc. But you prefer probably to send a new UAV that cannot be driven by a pilot of a UAV because uh, it will be not sustainable to have such expertise. You need to be driven by an artificial intelligence supervised eventually by an expert. You will have to think about how to do addictive manufacturing. You have to rethink about how to manage the new routes and how to maintain the operation. Because as you know, the route of the shipping 
is one crucial component, but is a component of the world logistic chain. Here is the example of Tianjin. Tianjin is interesting because it was the entrance gate to China in the two century, uh, that, the big from since the end of the 800, so since the beginning of the last century. Now is the ninth port worldwide. And Tianjin is interesting because, uh, you know, we had um, a major event. This is the explosion that happened in Tianjin that was in 12 August 2015, where 800 tons of ammonium nitrate exploded at the equivalent of over 300 tons of TNT. There was a, several casualties, but there was a big, huge damage in terms of um, impact on the town. This is the crater. And there was 9 billion US dollar damage in the port area. This was happening. There was a car manufacturing facility that was, as you can see, flat. There was a eel made of container flying around. It was a huge impact in terms of uh, pollution over the area for, for all this damage. Uh, Unfortunately, this is not something that happened once. You know, this event that you see here was happening not in August 2015, as we have seen here, but this is the event that was happening in Beirut on the 4th of August. I had the opportunity to have a meeting with port, um, Arabic ports virtually just uh, a few weeks after it. Uh, it was a huge, it was the biggest probably explosion out of military operation corresponding to over one kiloton. And it was 2,700 tons of nitrate ammonium. Even in this case, casualties was huge, but let me say it's even more huge the number of homeless people. That is over 300, it was estimated 300,000. And the, the disruptive impact on the area, on the town, on the port. Uh, we learn from this accident, but we need to have model and tool to face that. So this is the message that I transmit. I will leave up to you a presentation where there are examples that can give you a much more uh, detailed set of cases where these methods are applied using artificial intelligence, intelligent agent to support operations, to support education and training, as well as uh, to pass to learning by doing or to learning by accident, to learn by crowd working on virtual environment and digital twin that could change the perspective we face a different system. And we have many big capabilities nowadays that are already available, as well as uh, many examples. This is a project that I don't have time to explain, but this is a project to improve the resilience and reduce vulnerability of, a, of an area, a desertic area with uh, some towns, a major town and four other medium-sized towns and some village, and with the critical infrastructure, with the salination facility, tank farm, with power generation, terminal, port terminal, etc., and stimulating not only that, but even the virtual the, the cyberspace and the connection with this one. And in this environment, cyberspace it can introduce vulnerability and require to develop defense capabilities to pre protect confidentiality, integrity, availability, and privacy of information that could be sensitive. It could be even vulnerable to media attack that could affect uh, information by fake news, creating panic in population because if I don't have to damage the desalination, if I can diffuse the information that the water that we provide by the salination facility is infected or is toxic. No? So it's a new way to analyze. We was developing simulation to evaluate attacks by a managed system combined with cycle, with cyber. And let me say this was demonstrated in 2015, while in September 2019, there was the, an attack made by similar approach in Saudi Aramco uh, world largest oil refinery were creating an impact on world economics of oil and gas. And this is a demonstration to think ex exist, happen, and we have technology to face that. Okay. So we have to address, but it's not just about terrorism, it's just about war, just about defense, homeland security, but we can do in regular operation. These are examples for virtual marine operation, import, in off rigs, 
we can do a lot in this area to develop new solutions, to train the people, to support operations, except to even think about how to reshape this environment and to develop strategy in this environment. So I hope this was um, interesting for you. And uh, I feel you will find many different examples uh, in the transparency that I leave up to you. And uh, so if you have any question, I will be very glad to answer and to be with you for the remaining part of the day. Thanks you very much. So let me shift back. I will put, I don't know, up. I leave just the information about my contact point if you are interested. If you are interested in Strategos Initiative to cooperate, to, to provide the contribution, to attend some of our webinar, to make some uh, joint exercise with our students, some tabletop exercise to develop some case, they will be very more than glad to cooperate. Thank you again. So thanks and see you around.